this is M.W. McLeod here, and I wanted to talk to you today about Dungeons & Dragons. So, on Saturday this week, we did not have a session, and I thought we were going to earlier in the week. Uh, so, I was a little bit disappointed, but then I realized it also gives me a little bit of an opportunity to start um, talking about our next campaign because our current DM is going to be taking a break and will be passing the reins over to uh, Dungeon Master number one, as it were, um, and we're going to be going back to that old world. Uh, however, this campaign that we're going back to is actually a sequel campaign. And I'm a little reluctant to give a lot of details about Campaign 1 because it might be inspiring some things on my side for the writing. So let me give you the TLDR of Campaign 1 from Dungeon Master 1, for lack of a better term. So we set the scene in a world where a coven of witches has pulled the zodiacs from the sky. And it turns out after some time that the world has realized that these zodiacs are not compatible with the real world. And in being not compatible with the real world, they have some serious consequences that they are causing among the mortal folks. And our old characters had to, uh, in one way or another, send those zodiacs back to where they belong, back to the Astral Sea. That's the very basics of that campaign. So now we have the sequel campaign to that. And in the sequel campaign, uh, we are setting the scene in uh, the southern part of the continent we were formerly on. We were in the north previously, so now uh, we're closer to water, it's warmer, uh, so we're seeing some different things, but also very similar veins. Um, we all started at a circus, probably because we're all weird characters. And in starting at that circus, we discovered the body of the ringmaster uh, dead in his quarters. And that was uh, between shows. So now we had to figure out, okay, well, who would have possibly offed the ringmaster? Who had motive? Who might have done it? And we did this huge investigation, and we have a lot of characters who are built for investigation. We came up with nothing. Nothing. The person got away. First session, first encounter, the bad guy got away. And that is the same feeling that we have had throughout the whole campaign. <laughs> we left that circus and we ran into uh, a group of people who were like barbarians who were attacking us. And these barbarians were apparently... Uh, people who learned the tactics from another group who uh, originally started by attacking them. And we also noticed among that group people who were part of the cult of Lolth. And we kept going and we ran into um, a group of marauding orcs and goblins. And we almost, we very easily almost had a TPK there. Um, and finally, we made it to the hometown of two of our characters where we had to give them the news that uh, one of their sons had died. And that was a tough conversation. And we uh, were able to get a signal out to uh, one of the factions that the group is associated with. And we made our way out of town and we discovered some symbology for, I want to say, Bane and somebody else. Maybe Orcus. And we discovered that there is this, uh, I think, formerly dwarvish stronghold um, seated up against a mountain. And when we 
uh, got closer to it, we discovered that it had been overtaken by not only the cult of Loth and a bunch of drow, but also the leader among that group was a drider and a gith yankee that were working together. After we finished that encounter, we ran into another group that uh, was able to get a signal out to their faction and hopefully we'll see some ramifications from that eventually, but it wasn't a really quick turnaround on hearing back from them. And then we started going to the capital city and we ran into this, like, group of desecrated ruins that was definitely held up by someone who worshipped Orcus. And long story short, we're in over our heads with demon lords and cults and I don't even know how to handle this. So yeah, we're, we're now in the capital city and we have gone to meet with our contacts and given them as much information as we could and hopefully they aren't plants from the bad guys because that would be really bad. So anyway, that is a rundown of campaign one and so far in campaign two. Uh, I'm going to do some character introductions for campaign two, but then also uh, our characters have been progressing in campaign two a little bit too quickly for the dungeon master. And so we are actually going to have a second pair of characters and... Um, I personally think that we're going to have a moment not unlike what uh, recently happened in Stranger Things 4, uh, where one group is going to be having a battle that is going to affect what's happening with the second group and vice versa. So uh, who knows what will happen? I don't. And uh, anyway, ta-ta for now and I'll see you next time. I just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you to my patrons for supporting me. 